Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be working on my large American elm bonsai. This tree was dug up from the front garden in 2015. So it's been eight years in training as a bonsai. When I initially dug it up, I did very severe root pruning on it in an effort to get a nice flat kind of radial root base. I put a person in there for scale. That's about the size I envision for the tree at the present moment anyway. If you look up into the canopy, you can see the elm structure I'm trying to get. That graceful flowing elm structure, that upright kind of broom style canopy that you typically see them growing in nature. Today I'm going to defoliate it and prune it up. And this is a big step. The reason I'm going to defoliate the tree is that there's a few problems on the leaves. The tree flushed out really nicely in spring. The leaves were looking really healthy and then it started to develop leaf galls. So I'll show you what one looks like right up here, right there. So at the moment it looks like a black kind of lump on the leaf. In spring they're green. And this is a reaction of the tree to insects. Uh, they're probably leaf miners or mites that attack the leaves and the tree reacts by putting out a leaf gall. It's not harmful to the tree, but it just looks unsightly. Giving your tree a spray with dormant oil in spring will help control the insects that attack the leaves, but they occur naturally in nature, these insects, so there's not a lot you can do about it. Uh, you can remove the infected leaves, give it another spray with soap and water, and that will certainly help. I've never defoliated my elms midsummer, so this is a bit of an experiment. I'm hoping the new leaves come in smaller, I get better fall colors, and I get rid of that leaf gall. I'm going to start the work today by giving the tree a profile prune with the blue scissors, and then I'll go in and finish the defoliation with the remaining leaves. All right, here I go, giving it a umbrella-shaped canopy. So I will come in at the highest point, which will be about here, and begin pruning. I have my height established now, so now I'm going to round the canopy. Some heavy pruning here. This branch is quite vigorous and a little taller and stronger than this side of the tree. Okay, I think that's got the profile in check. Next, I'll begin the total defoliation. I'll begin the defoliation now, revealing the branch structure. The leaves on an elm are attached very close to the branches, a very short leaf petiole. So you have to be careful when you're leaf pruning that you don't disturb the dormant buds at the base of each leaf. So you have to come in very carefully and prune them off. Elms are very vigorous trees, so I'm hoping this leaf pruning doesn't affect the health of the tree that it grows really nicely for the remainder of the year. I haven't encountered any dead branches yet. Hopefully I don't, but if you do, it's best to prune them off when you know it's dead, so you're not pruning the tree back to dead branches once the pruning begins. I'm making good progress. I've got a lot of the front here done, revealing that arching branch structure, typical of an American elm. I've got the tree on the floor now, so I'm beginning to defoliate the upper canopy. It's a lot easier reaching the leaves from above like this. A little less tiring on your arms. So the defoliation is going well. It takes quite a while because you have to really be careful where you cut. You don't want to damage that bud at the base of the leaf. But it's coming, coming along well.
I am pruning the last few leaves off the tree now. I think there's three leaves left. So here I go. One, two, and three. There we go. The tree is now defoliated. Here's a look at the pile of leaves I took off. So here's some of the ones with leaf gall on them. Uh, there's some that are all half eaten. I don't know, these elm leaves must taste delicious or something because a lot of insects eat them. Yeah, so there's the pile of leaves. So I'll put those on the compost heap and we'll get the tree up on the table and look at the branch structure. Here is a look at the tree defoliated so you can see the branch structure. Now this tree, it was grown in the ground and it just grew all by itself from a seed that must have fallen in the front garden. It has some big chops on it. If I rotate it around to the back here, you can see there's a big, big cut here. There was a fairly big one there and there's a newer cut here. I've sealed all these cuts with rubber cement and it seems to be preserving the dead wood quite nicely. It's not rotting away or anything. So it's time to prune up the branches now. One thing you should try and achieve with your bonsai is to get the branches tapering from thick where they join onto the trunk, having them taper and getting finer and finer out towards the edges of the canopy. You also want more and more branching as you get towards the outer canopy. And you're also looking for flowing, flowing and graceful branches. You don't want like abrupt 90 degree angles, usually, on your branches. You want them smooth and flowing. Most of the branches on this tree do taper nicely, thick at the base, tapering thinner and thinner as you get towards the edges of the canopy. This one branch here is getting a little thick up top. You can see this part of it is quite thick. It's not fine and delicate like the outer edges should be. So I'll have to do some reduction on this branch. All right, the first branch I'm going to prune, if I rotate the tree a bit, you can see there's one coming straight out here. And it's not in a very good place. It's kind of growing from the inside of a curve here. Uh, I do want branches to fill in the middle here, so I'm not going to eliminate it totally. I'm just going to prune it back shorter. And I think I'll go right back to here. So here I go. I have another one here that's fairly straight. Um, I'll just take the top off of that one. This branch here is very interesting. I'll take a dead stub off here. Um, I'll take the top off here. Take the top off here. And I think I'm going to have to remove this whole thick section here. It's just getting too thick. So here I go. I'm going to come in with the pruners. Like this and I'll rotate it around so you can see it and off it comes like that. This part here I could reduce this one also back to this branch. And I think I will. It's getting also a little thick up top like that. I think I'm going to eliminate this one entirely. I think it's running parallel to the branch back here. I don't need it. It's just a little cluttered in this area. So I'll come in and try and get in there and prune it right out. I'll cut it off shorter and then come in and clean it up. Like that. Some of these branches coming out front are getting a little long. I'll prune those back. Prune my dead stubs off from last time I pruned the tree. And I think I'll prune this one back. 
and this one also. And I think I'll take this one back a little further. This one can come off here. Just trying to clean up this area. There's a branch growing back in on the tree here. I'll take that one out. Trying to keep graceful flowing lines on the tree, if possible. You do want some, uh, some twists and turns on the tree. You don't want it to look predictable. I think that's the worst thing for a bonsai is, you know, every branch perfectly in place so there's no surprises. There's no interest. It's just kind of makes a boring tree. There's a dead branch in here that I'll prune out right here. There's lots of branches around it that lived, but the center part of that one died off. So that comes out. I'm also trying to keep every branch so it has sunlight. I don't want branches crossing over each other, shading out branches. Now there's a branch coming out from the bottom here, which is growing over top of this branch. And I think that one needs to be removed entirely also. Like that. I'll just clean that up a bit. Like that. That cleans up that area of the tree. I think this branch could be eliminated too. I have it nicely flowing out and then this one goes straight up kind of competing with this branch so this one will come right off so here I go like that that looks much nicer so I'm just following each branch from the trunk outwards looking for you know structural problems correcting them if I can. I'm kind of shortening the overall size of the tree now that I can see, you know, how far I can prune it back. Here is a look at the tree now. I think it looks really natural. I think it's got that kind of weeping shape that the American elm naturally gets. I have lots of kind of upright branches. I think it's very representative of the American elm as a species. I think it's uh, yeah, a miniature version of the full-size trees. So I, I think that's it for the pruning work. I did notice the tree needs watering, so I'll do that next. I originally dug up three American elms from my front garden. The large one here, a medium sized one and a small one. The small size one died over the winter. I don't know why. It could have been Dutch elm disease, I don't know. The medium sized one I gave to Connor. So now I just have my large size one. Death of these trees is always a, a risk. Uh, this tree could die any time. All it takes is like the little beetles that carry the Dutch elm disease to infect the tree and it'll be totally dead. We had some large ones in the backyard and they all suddenly died from Dutch elm disease. Here is a look at the large American elms we had in our backyard. They provided quite a shade canopy, and then one year they just all died off from Dutch elm disease. All that remains now is their skeletons. There is always a risk of your trees dying at any time. They can get disease, they can get attacked by borers. Uh, there's a lot of things that can kill a tree, strange weather patterns. 
So I just try and uh, enjoy the bonsai every day, enjoy working on the trees, and hopefully the majority of the trees survive. Before I water my American elm, I'm going to spray it down thoroughly with soap and water to kill any insects that could be on the tree, and then I'll rinse it off thoroughly, and that will be my watering. All right, I've got my soap and water. I'm using Dawn liquid dish soap today. Uh, it's the kind you use for hand washing dishes. So here I go, I'll spray the tree down. And you want to get in all the cracks and crevices of the bark. Make sure it's thoroughly soaked to kill any insects that are hiding in the bark. You want to get all the branches. And then I'll get above and spray down. Spray the surface of my soil in case there's any insects in the moss. And I think that will do with the soap. That is thoroughly soaked down. So I'll let that sit for a bit, uh, maybe four or five minutes, and then I'll thoroughly rinse everything off. All right, it's time to rinse the tree off, so here I go. My American elm is defoliated, pruned up, sprayed with soap and water, and rinsed off, watered thoroughly, so it's ready to go back on the bench in full sun, and we'll see how it does in the future. So that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.